Welcome to this lecture number 39 on this NPTEL course on fluid mechanics for undergraduate chemical engineering students. The topic that we are discussing currently is turbulent flows and we discussed in the last lecture lecture number 38 that turbulent flows are characterized by a large amount of fluctuations about the mean. Suppose you consider a flow in a pipe okay, and let us say this is z direction of the flow and r is the direction normal to the flow the radial direction along the pipe. Okay. So, while there will be mean flow if you apply a pressure drop between the ends of the pipe, while there will be a mean flow in the z direction there will also be a large amount of fluctuations about this mean flow. And if you measure for example, the z velocity as a function of time using some probe at a given point in space in the pipe, you will find that there will be a large amount of fluctuations about the mean. Okay. While if you measure the, so this is the 0 of the, so this is the z component of the velocity, while on the other hand you measure the r component there will again be fluctuations, but they will be fluctuating about the 0, because there is no net flow in the r direction. The pressure gradient is only along the z direction, therefore there will be flow only along the z direction. Okay. So, the fluctuations that are present in a turbulent flow play a very key role in determining the stresses that are present in a turbulent flow. Now, so we decided that it is better to restrict ourselves to predicting the mean quantities such as the time average quantities, velocities. Uh, uh, etcetera, because from an engineering perspective from the point of view of practical applications what we uh, want is actually average quantities such as friction factor or volumetric flow rate or pressure drop and so on. So, these are all average quantities. So, it makes sense for us to restrict ourselves to predicting only the mean rather than the fluctuations. Okay. But uh, as we saw in the last lecture and as I am going to reiterate that point again uh, the fluctuations do play an indirect role even in determining the mean. Okay. And the way that happens is like this. Okay. You write the total velocity as a mean plus fluctuations, fluctuations are denoted by prime. The mean velocity is defined as 1 over t in the limit t tending to infinity 1 over 2 t times integral t minus t to t plus t v z of t prime d t prime. What we are essentially saying is uh, here is that suppose you look at um, this velocity profile this uh, velocity data let us say this is the actual velocity data. Now, we are going to take some time t okay, and we are going to integrate the velocity fluctuations in this region between minus t and plus t that is t minus tau to t plus tau okay, and we are going to integrate this data okay, and divide by 2 t. Okay. Now, if the flow is okay, steady in the mean that is if the flow is stationary it that would imply that v z itself is independent of time. What this means is that you could have you could imagine doing this averaging by shifting this t to some other value let us say here you could also have t here and then do from t minus t to t plus t a small t minus capital T to t plus capital T and the averages thus computed will be indifferent of will be independent of where you choose t to be that is the meaning of uh, stationary flows or steady in the mean okay, flows. So, what we did was to substitute this uh, split v z is a function of x y z time this v z bar v z bar is already time average. So, it is a function only of x z x y z plus v z prime which is a function of x y z and time back in the navier stokes equation. Okay. And we average the entire navier stokes equation while doing so we neglected quantities such as like this v y prime d v x bar d y bar okay, whole average. This would be essentially v y prime average times d v x bar by d y 
although this is non zero okay but the average of a fluctuating quantity is zero okay so such quantities which have which occur as uh, which occur linearly in fluctuating quantities uh, in when when substituting this expansion the total flow is the mean plus fluctuations back into the navier stokes equation you will encounter quantities like this and those are zero but we will also encounter quantities such as this the product of two fluctuations average and this is not zero okay the product of two fluctuations is uh, the average of uh, two product of two fluctuations is not equal to the product of their averages and this is because of the fact that these two quantities could be correlated in time so when you integrate over a, a particular instant particular extent of time they could in general be non zero so the integral could be non zero although the individual values if you integrate over time could be zero because the, if they are positively correlated then they could be non zero so that is the uh, main reason why fluctuations play a role even in determining the mean turbulent flow okay okay so now after uh, substituting all this and time averaging we finally ended up with this expression rho dvx dx plus vy dvx dy this is the most general ex expression we are of course going to simplify this little later for specific cases x dz okay is equal to minus p partial x plus partial tau x x bar a partial x plus partial tau y x bar partial y plus partial tau z x bar a partial z plus if you merely put bars in the navier stokes equation the steady navier stokes equation you will just get this but the fluctuations play a role because there are quantities such as this okay minus d d x of rho v x prime v x prime bar minus d d x of rho uh, okay uh, d d x of rho v y sorry d d y of rho v y prime v x prime bar minus d d uh, there is a minus sign so that is correct minus dd z of rho vz prime vx prime now these three okay so can be in again included back into this derivative minus partial p bar by partial x plus partial by partial x of tau xx bar minus rho vx prime vx prime plus partial by partial y of tau y x bar minus rho v y prime v x prime plus partial by partial z of tau z x bar minus rho v z prime v x prime whole bar okay now these are termed as Reynolds stresses because they all appear as stresses and they appear in the same way as the viscous stresses appear divergence of the viscous stress these are called turbulent stresses or Reynolds stresses. So, this is for example denoted as tau x x turbulent this is denoted as tau y x turbulent and this is denoted as tau z x turbulent okay. these are called Reynolds stresses. or simply turbulent stresses. So, they are denoted as some tau x y turbulent and so on. They are also symmetric tensors they are also tau x y is tau y x they are symmetric okay, but their origin lies purely in the fluctuating motion that is uh, present uh, often in a turbulent flow okay. Turbulent flows are often characterized by rapid random fluctuations in both space and time. So, these are basically averages of uh, quantities products of quantities and they are in general time dependent ok. Now, we, we have to solve this, but in order to solve this we have to tell something more about these turbulent stresses. 
So, one option is to write the turbulent stress in terms of a viscosity called eddy viscosity times the mean velocity gradients, just as we wrote for the viscous stress. Okay. This is called the eddy viscosity hypothesis, this is not a rigorous relation, this is merely a hypothesis. Okay. So, this is called the eddy viscosity hypothesis. Now, if eddy viscosity which has the same dimensions as the normal viscosity, if this is a constant then it is a trivial addition, because it changes nothing, it is almost like you are uh, increasing the effective viscosity by eta plus eta eddy. Okay. So, it will be another viscosity, so we are merely changing the character of the fluid by increasing its viscosity by a tiny amount by some amount, but so this is not what is in what is happening in reality, because this eddy viscosity is not a constant, it is a function of spatial portions in general. Because for the simple reason that if you consider a turbulent flow past a solid surface like turbulent flow in a pipe uh, near the wall the flux at the wall itself the velocities are 0 by no slip, no slip condition and no penetration condition. So, near the wall the velocity fluctuations will be small compared to the bulk of the flow. So, near the wall the magnitude of the fluctuations are small, so therefore the turbulent stresses will be small and hence since we are trying to model the turbulent stress in terms of the mean velocity gradients somehow the eddy viscosity has to be small in order to keep the turbulent stresses small close to the solid surface. So, that physic that physical aspect has to be built in in, in the model by saying that eddy viscosity is not a constant, but instead it is a function of spatial portions. Okay. So, in some sense what we are trying to do in this type of hypothesis or in this kind of modeling is that our ignorance about the way in which turbulence transports momentum is sort of buried in this single parameter. So, one can often ask the question whether a single parameter well it is not a single constant parameter it is a function, but whether a single function can alone describe all the complexities of turbulence. So, that is a uh, that is a fair criticism, but nonetheless for engineering applications we will show that the eddy viscosity proves a very very reasonable tool to predict uh, for example, friction factor versus uh, Reynolds number relation in the turbulent regime uh, with some suitable physically motivated approximations and with some experimental input we, we will show a little later that we will predict using this model. So, we will be content in this course by using the eddy viscosity like approach although it has its own uh, limitations okay, in terms of uh, generalizing how this approach can be extended to other turbulent flows, but at least for turbulent flow through uh, tubes and uh, rectangular channels and turbulent flow past a flat plate all these kinds of uh, turbulent shear flows it turns out that the eddy viscosity is a fairly reasonable model uh, especially if you are interested in engineering applications. Okay. Now, so as I told you the eddy viscosity has to be in some sense uh, we have to provide a model for eddy viscosity, otherwise it is not a constant that we have agreed. So, the model for eddy viscosity was first provided by Prantl, it is called the Prantl mixing length model. So, Prantl wrote an expression for eddy viscosity like this times the rho times L squared, where L is called the mixing length. Okay rho is the density of the fluid and this is the magnitude of the velocity gradient in the fluid. Okay. This is the Prantl's eddy mixing length hypothesis for eddy viscosity. Now, the origin of this uh, expression uh, comes from kinetic theory of gases, wherein if you consider the normal viscosity the routine shear viscosity of a liquid, okay, the dynamic viscosity of a liquid uh, one can use for a if you consider the kinetic uh, dynamic viscosity of a dilute gas such as are using kinetic theory you can write down the visc viscosity in terms of the density of uh, molecules times the mean free path square times the velocity gradient the magnitude of the velocity gradient. In a similar spirit Prantl wrote down this uh, he imagined that instead of molecules you have this turbulent eddies which are undergoing this random motion and therefore, uh, these eddies are able to transport momentum just as molecular collisions transport momentum in a dilute gas. Um, this is a hypothesis that 
the turbulent eddies almost act in a similar manner. So, he wrote an expression based on uh, this uh, mixing length. Okay. So, so the mixing length is physically the length over which a turbulent eddy loses its identity just as uh, what is the, the mean free path in the classical kinetic theory is the distance typical distance between two collisions of uh, between two molecules. Uh, in some sense a turbulent eddy moves okay, and then once it collides with some other eddy it sort of loses its identity. Uh, so, uh, turbulent eddies themselves are uh, rough or loose concepts they are not rigorous concepts like uh, velocity and vorticity, but these are physical concepts which are uh, motivated by intuitive ideas rather than rigorous uh, first principles. Okay. So, um, key thing is that at the wall okay, at if you have any turbulent shear flow at the wall there has to be some non zero velocity gradient. So, the velocity gradient is not 0 at the wall, but you would expect the turbulent fluctuations to go to 0 at the wall therefore, eta eddy has to go to 0 at the wall. If this is not 0 and if this is not 0 rho is the density of the fluid cannot be 0. So, L has to somehow go to 0 at the wall at solid walls at rigid surfaces. Okay. So, this is something that we can say uh, very uh, in a very definitive way from straightforward physical considerations that um, at a solid surface the uh, eddy viscosity has to go to 0, because otherwise if it does not go to 0 uh, the turbulent uh, fluctuations uh, the turbulent stresses will not go to 0, but if the eddy viscosity is 0 that means that we have to somehow say that. Uh, this mixing length has to go to 0. So, the mixing length is in fact, so instead of saying uh, in some sense what we have done is to trade one unknown function to another unknown function, because everything else is known in the problem. Okay. But um, this model does have some physical grounding in the sense that it is motivated by kinetic theory of gases, where random motion of molecules and collisions uh, transport momentum. Here we are making an analogy by saying that the random motion of eddies in a turbulent flow transport momentum transports momentum. Okay. Now, we are going to uh, go to a specific example turbulent pipe flow. We have already seen that turbulent pipe flow uh, can be characterized uh, using experiments in terms of the friction factor as a Reynolds number chart and uh, in the laminar regime we know the exact analytical relation by solving the Navier-Stokes equation under simplifying assumptions. Now, can we make some progress in predicting the friction factor versus Reynolds number relation in the turbulent regime using the eddy viscosity kind of approach? Okay, that is a question we we want to answer. Now, uh, of course, uh, turbulent flow in a pipe must be addressed in cylindrical coordinates. So, I'll switch to cylindrical coordinates. So, the mean flow will satisfy. There is only one mean flow, Vz. Okay. So v r is 0 and v theta is 0. Okay. So, many terms will drop out. So, the mean flow is in the, the r z momentum equation okay, is plus 1 over r d d r of r d tau r z by d r. Uh, well, but we also have uh, not just this, we also have the turbulent contribution. So, let us write this as there are both the mean contrib viscous contribution plus the turbulent contribution. Okay. So, in some sense we can rewrite this very simply to yield um, T R Z plus T R Z T is nothing but. So, we can write is equal to d p d z okay. and then we take r here and then integrate you will get tau r z plus tau r z t is d p d z times r squared by 2. So, this is d d r of r. So, you will have an r after integration plus some constant. Okay. So, tau r z bar plus tau r z turbulent is d p d z 
r by 2 plus c 1 by r. Now, we can readily say that as r goes to 0 in the center of the pipe the stresses will be finite. So, c 1 has to go to 0. So, we can say very easily that tau r z plus tau r z turbulent is r by 2 d p d z. Okay. Now, if we do a macroscopic momentum balance, so you take a tiny section of the pipe delta z, do a macroscopic momentum balance, the forces here are the pressure forces on this side and this side. If you take this as the control volume, now and on the surface you will have viscous forces which will retard the fluid in the minus z direction. Okay. So, you have d p d z times delta z is equal to the stress wall shear stress exerted by the wall on the fluid times 2 pi r delta z, okay, where r is the radius of the pipe. Now, you can easily see that delta z delta z will cancel, 1 pi will cancel and 1 r will cancel to give tau w is nothing but okay, r times minus d p d z by 2. Okay. So, we substitute, we substitute instead of d p d z, instead, so this implies minus d p d z is 2 tau w by r. We substitute this term out here okay, to give okay, to get tau r z plus tau r z turbulent is okay, minus r by r tau w, because that is what it is. Uh, you have plus d p d z here, you have minus d p z here. So, if you substitute in terms of tau r, tau w the wall shear stress you will get simply minus r the factors of 2 will go away. Okay. Now, we know what is tau r z, okay, this is eta times t r and we know what is the turbulent uh, stress in the r z direction that is from the mixing length model. Okay, it is rho l square times d v z d r times d v z d r okay, is equal to minus r by r tau w the wall shear stress exerted by the wall on the fluid. Okay. Now, um, so you have a pipe okay, the the axis is along the center of the pipe. So, we said that r is along this direction, z is along this direction. Now, I am going to define y from the wall towards the center. So, trivially r capital R minus small r is equal to y. This implies d y is minus d r. So, when say once I use this and I can convert this entire equation in terms of can convert this in terms of y okay which i'll do very quickly okay so we'll have rho l square okay times d v z by dy whole square plus eta d v z by dy minus 1 minus y by r times tau w is 0. Okay. Now, notice that y is going like this and the velocity profile will be like this. So, d v z d y is a quantity that is positive okay. and uh, okay, that has been taken into account in r. So, the mod is not required anymore, because the d v z d y is positive. Now, the boundary condition is that v z bar is 0 at r equals capital R. There is a no slip condition 
which is satisfied by both the mean and fluctuations. So far we have to we have not specified what is L as a function of y. So, we have to specify this okay, that is another task that we have to do. Okay. So, before I proceed further I am going to non dimensionalize this using turbulence scales. These are done conventionally the scales used for uh, non dimensionalizing are not very obvious the velocities are scaled by the friction velocity which is denoted as u star that is nothing but square root of tau w by rho. Okay. So, but we know what is tau w in terms of the macroscopic momentum balance tau w is r by 2 delta p by l. So, that is something that we just derived using a macroscopic momentum balance here. So, this expression so, instead of d p d z I am going to write delta p minus d p d z I am going to write delta p by l. So, delta p by l is minus okay. that is pressure at the inlet delta p is nothing but p inlet minus p outlet. Okay. So, that is the definition of delta p. So, u star therefore, becomes square root of r by 2 delta p by l. 1 over rho within the square root. Okay. Now, we know that delta p by l is related to friction factor for flow in a pipe. Okay. So, here I am going to use the fanning friction factor which is differs by a factor of 4 from the Darcy friction factor which we have already pointed out the differences. Fanning friction factor is defined as delta p divided by 2 rho v squared Okay, times d by l is equal to f. Okay. This is the fanning friction factor. Now, there are two types of averages that are involved. Suppose, I have a quantity okay, v z, the over bar denotes time average, the angular brackets uh, denotes cross sectional average. Remember that when we define friction factors, Okay. We have to uh, define with respect to a cross sectionally average velocity, but here we are considering turbulent flow the velocity is also time dependent in general, but we are worried only about the uh, time independent mean flow. So, there is an average with respect to space as well as a time period okay. uh, the extent of time. Okay. So, using this I can write what is delta p by l in terms of f and I can substitute it back here. Okay. So, I will get u star the scale used for non dimensionalization is nothing but square root of delta p by l d by 4 1 over rho, but delta p by l times d by 2 rho is f times v square. Okay. So, delta p by l d by 4 rho is nothing but f by 2 v z. Okay. Um, so, so, v z squared. Okay. So, if you substitute this in here you will get u star is v z average square root of f by 2. So, this is a highly non trivial velocity scale this is called the friction velocity. because normally we would non dimensionalize things only by this here we are trying to multiply it by a square root of f over 2. So, it is highly non trivial in terms of uh, uh, non dimensionalizing turbulent flow. So, so we will define the non dimensional z velocity as u by u star and we will define non dimensional distance y plus as y by nu by u star where nu is eta by rho is the kinematic viscosity. Okay. So, since we have used the length scale for non dimensionalization is this not the radius of the tube 
and there is a pro, uh, very important reason why we are choosing a different length scale. Uh, this length scale is not set by the macroscopic uh, dimensions of uh, the geometry such as pipe radius or channel width or length of a plate or something. It is inherent to the uh, turbulent flow, because nu is the kinematic viscosity and u star is essentially uh, friction velocity di dictated by the turbulent flow. Okay. So, the non dimensional radius okay, will become will become r plus is r times u star by nu that becomes r e times square root of f over 8, okay, where r e is defined as eta. Okay. And you also have a non dimensional mixing length, because because that also has to be known all the length scales has to be non dimensionalized by uh, nu divided by u star okay else l plus is l divided by nu by u star okay so after doing all this we can rewrite this expression we have this expression out here we can rewrite in terms of the non dimensional variables we have just defined okay Okay. So, we will write this as L plus square d u plus by d y plus whole square plus d u plus by d y plus minus 1 minus y plus by r plus is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic in d u plus by d y plus. Uh, so, it is uh, like a quadratic equation. So, you can solve this quadratic for what is d u plus by d y plus sorry and so that becomes minus 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus square times 1 minus y plus by r plus divided by 2 l plus square. The reason why we are not choosing the minus root is because we know that d u plus by d y plus is a positive quantity. Uh, because you notice that y goes from the wall towards the center. So, the velocity profile will increase in some sense like this. So, d u plus, d u plus by d y plus cannot be a negative quantity. If that is the case, then you cannot choose a negative root, because you already have a negative number in the first term. So, the second term better be positive in order to make d u plus by d y plus a positive quantity. Okay. So, and we can solve this equation by using the no slip condition at the wall u plus must be 0. So, we can integrate this equation okay. Okay. u plus is integral 0 to y plus minus 1 plus plus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus square 1 minus y plus by r plus. Okay. divided by 2 l plus square times d y plus. Okay. Now, this is by integrating from the wall towards the center. Uh, another way of integrating is, which is also often useful is to integrate from the center line. That is from r plus towards the wall. Okay. So, this is by integrating from y plus equal to 0 to any y plus, but we can also integrate from y plus is r plus to any y plus. Okay. So, once we do that, we will get u plus is u plus max plus integral y plus to r plus 1 minus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus square times 1 minus y plus by r plus 
divided by 2 L plus square d y plus. Okay. So, this is also possible. So, we will find use for both these expressions in, in our discussion to follow. Now, Prandtl proposed for the mixing layer, mixing la length, a hypothesis for the mixing length. See, the mixing length has to go to 0 at the wall. So, the simplest hypothesis is that it is some constant k times y plus, it is a linear function of y plus. And experimentally, it turns out that k works to be 0.4 to predict the friction factor, we will come to that a little later, but right now we will just treat k to be a constant which can be fitted by comparing with experiments. Okay. So, once we do that, if you look at this expression, so let us rewrite this expression again, I am going to rewrite this expression again and make an important observation. So, what we are going to do is to use this expression where we had u plus as integral 0 to y plus times minus 1 plus square root under 1 plus 4 L plus square times 1 minus y plus by r plus divided by 2 L plus square times d y plus. So, we are going to use this expression to analyze some and, in and draw some very important conclusions about turbulent flow past solid surfaces. The first thing is universality. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, the only way in which radius enters the problem is through this term. Okay. So, 1 minus y plus by r plus. If y plus by r plus is small compared to 1, that is if you are fairly close to the wall, okay, then we can treat 1 minus y plus by r plus as approximately 1 and therefore, all the dependence on the radius end of the pipe okay, disappears from the problem. So, essentially you have u plus as, as a function of y plus as approximately for under this condition that y plus by r plus small compared to 1, that this is approximately equal to okay, minus 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4 L plus square divided by 2 L plus square times d y plus. Okay. Or you can simplify this further, okay. we can write root of 1 plus 4 L plus square minus 1 okay, as, okay. suppose you consider uh, root of 1 plus 4 L plus square minus 1 times root of 1 plus 4 L plus square plus 1 divided by root of 1 plus 4 L plus square plus 1. I am multiplying and dividing by the same quantity. This of the form uh, so, if I multiply it these two terms, I get 1 plus 4 L plus square minus 1 divided by square root of 1 plus 4 L plus square plus 1. Now, the 2 minus 1s cancel to give you 4 L plus square by square root of 1 plus 4 L plus square plus 1. So, essentially I can write Therefore, that if I were to have this term, I can replace this by this term here, which we derived okay, 4 L plus square, 4 L plus square by root of 1 plus 4 L plus square plus 1, this entire thing. This 4 L plus square will cancel with 2 L plus square to give you only a factor of 2. So, u plus as a function of y plus becomes twice 0 to y plus okay, d y plus divided by 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus square. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, this expression has no radius of the pipe in it and there is no reference to the geometry of the pipe also, it is fairly close to the wall. So, this equation 
must be true for any any turbulent flow past a rigid surface turbulent shear flow past a rigid surface be it flow through a pipe or flow through a rectangular channel or flow past a boundary layer for flow past a flat plate as long as the flow is turbulent and the flow is in one direction okay i'm predominantly in one direction these are called turbulent shear flows then this is in fact true so this is a universal velocity profile close to the wall so all turbulent shear flows close to the wall must exhibit this universal velocity profile now if you are very close to the wall so we remember that prandtl's hypothesis is l plus is ky plus okay if you are very close to the wall okay um, so you'll have l plus and k is about uh, 0.4 okay if l plus is much small compared to 1 or we can say that y plus is small compared to 10 okay uh, it's 1 over 0.4 okay it's about 10 um, then so k is 0.4 so it's about uh, if k y plus is small compared to 10 then you will have 1 plus 4 l plus squared you can be treated approximately as 1 okay so 1 plus 4 l plus squared is because l plus is very very small compared to 1 you can do that so you'll have u of y plus is approximately 0 to y plus 1 plus order l plus squared times dy plus or you can say that u of y plus is approximately y plus close to the wall okay so this expression is in fact obtained if you go back to our original differential equation okay if you back go back to the original differential equation here this expression is obtained by neglecting this is the contribution to, to eddy viscosity this is the contribution due to the shear viscosity normal viscosity this is neglected close to the wall because close to the wall the turbulent fluctuations are small turbulent stresses are small that is what we mean by saying l plus is small compared to 1 so this term wins over this term and this term balances this term again this is small y plus is small compared to so when du plus by dy plus is 1 that means that the velocity profile is linear so this region close to the wall is called the viscous sub layer okay sometimes the term laminar sub layer is used but the flow is of course not laminar in this region it is in fact turbulent but the viscous effects dominate the turbulent stresses very close to the wall and this is a very universal feature of any turbulent shear flow past a solid surface this is not restricted to flow in a pipe turbulent flow in a pipe okay so let's look at okay turbulent core that is in the center of the pipe can we say anything more general okay so we are far away from the wall okay so we have l plus large compared to 1 because l plus is ky remember ky plus and y plus is large compared to 10 okay but still we are saying y plus is less than r plus okay so remember the other expression we had for u plus in terms of by integrating from the center of the pipe u plus max the maximum velocity plus y plus to r plus 1 minus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus squared times 1 minus y plus by r plus dy plus divided by 2 l plus squared okay now if l plus is large compared to 1 okay so you can say 1 minus square root of 1 plus 4 l plus square times 1 minus y plus by r plus is approximately okay is equal to 2 l plus times 1 minus y plus by r plus whole to the half okay if l plus is large compared to 1 then we can say that this is approximately that just equal to this okay now so we can further therefore write u plus as u plus max minus integral y plus to r plus 
1 minus y plus by r plus to the power half d y plus divided by l plus. Okay. Now, l plus is k y plus this is the Prandtl's hypothesis for the mixing length being a function of the distance from the wall. So, u plus is nothing but u plus max minus integral y plus r plus times 1 minus y plus by r plus to the power half by k y plus d y plus. Okay. So, all we are saying is that when l plus is large compared to 1, okay, we are expanding this term okay, and uh, that is the only simplification that we are making. Okay, when, when we do this uh, whole, whole exercise, that is the only simplification we are making. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, okay, you can integrate this u plus is u plus max plus 2 by that constant k times root of 1 minus y plus by r plus plus 1 over k logarithm of 1 minus square root of 1 minus y plus by r plus by 1 plus square root of 1 minus y plus by r plus. Okay. Now, here there are only two constants that are floating around u plus max and k. Okay. Now, k should be independent of flow conditions, because we have shown that it is a mixing length. So, it should not be a function of uh, the flow, okay. it could be a function of geometry for example, this is pipe flow, but generally it should not be a function of uh, flow conditions, uh, but u plus max is a function of flow conditions, because that is the maximum uh, flow velocity of the pipe not in a, in a non dimensional sense. Okay. Suppose you have y plus by r plus less than 0.5, you can expand the square roots. So, root of 1 minus y plus by r plus is approximately 1 minus half y plus by r plus plus so on. Okay. So, when I substitute this back out here, you get u plus is 1 over k okay, ln y plus plus 2 over k minus 1 over k ln 4 r plus plus u plus max plus order of y plus by r plus. So, we are not close to the center line, but at the same time we are far away from the wall. Okay. This is called the turbulent core region okay. and experiments tell you that u plus is 2.5 ln y plus okay, plus 5.5. So, by comparing these two expressions, we can infer this implies that k is 0.4 okay. and u plus max is 2.5 logarithm of r e root f plus 1.37. Okay. So, this is the description that we have okay, for uh, the flow that is far away from the wall, but still little away from uh, not close to the center, but little away from the center is called the turbulent core region. So, we have a description uh, for very close to the wall we have the viscous sub layer, where the velocity profile is just proportional to y plus and then we have a logarithmic velocity profile far away from the wall. Okay. So, we can patch these two relations. So, we have these two relations u plus is y plus the viscous sub layer and we have u plus is 2.5 log y plus plus 5.5. Now, if you plot these two curves and then say that the region where these two curves meet is, is the, the thickness of the viscous sub layer, then so you will have u plus as a function of log y plus, you will have one asymptote like this, another asymptote like this. So, if you if you equate these two and say this is the viscous sub layer thickness, then you will find that delta V s plus the thickness of the viscous sub layer, the non dimensional thickness of the viscous sub layer is 2.5 logarithm of delta V s plus plus 5.5. If you solve this, you will get 
delta V s plus is 11.6. Okay. So, the non-dimensional viscous sublayer thickness is 11.6 in general. Okay. Now, we have all the required quantities to find the, the friction factor versus Reynolds number relation. Now, you know that u star is square root of f by 2 v z. Okay. So, this is nothing but square root of f by 2 the definition of v z is 1 over pi r squared 0 to r 2 pi r the time average velocity v z bar d r and this is u star. We know that u plus is v z by u star. Okay, this implies, so I can bring since u star is a constant I can bring this u star to the denominator here and then call it u plus and then I can get a relation for the friction factor 2 by root f is 2 by r squared 0 to r r u plus d r. Now, I am going to convert from r to y. Okay. So, this becomes 2 by r squared 0 to r capital R minus y u plus d y. Now, we know that u plus has a composite depth description close to the solid surface you have the viscous sub layer little away you have the logarithmic region, but as a first approximation if you use u plus 2.5 log y plus plus 5.5 in the entire pipe. We are saying that we are not going to account for the viscous sub layer and we are not going to worry about the velocity profile close to the center of the pipe, because this logarithmic velocity profile is valid only in the intermediate regime far away from the wall, but again little uh, away from the center of the pipe. Okay, we are not going as far as the center of the pipe, but as a first approximation if you just use this out here let us see what happens. Then you will get 1 over root f is 1.8 log r e root f minus 0.6. But this is the expectation from theory experiments show uh, that 1 over root f is 1.7 log r e root f minus 0.4. Okay. So, this is a very a very approximate model may after we made so many approximations yielded this while experiments show this. Okay. So, that shows this gives some confidence in the efforts that we have made in understanding the turbulent flow in a pipe, because we do get constants that are fairly close to experiments of course, we have to correct them, but that is understandable because we have made a whole lot of assumptions uh, and we have made uh, errors in actually extending the velocity profile all the way from the wall to the center the logarithmic velocity profile when in reality it is not valid. So, we have made several approximations, but uh, having done all those approximations it is uh, quite satisfactory that the result from this approximate analysis of turbulent flow yields uh, very close uh, results very close to the uh, experimental result. So, this equation is called the von Karman Nikuratse equation and this predicts reasonably the f versus r e data that we already saw in when we discussed pipe flows and losses when we discussed friction factor Reynolds number relation the turbulent flow region for smooth pipes is reasonably captured by this relation and we also have obtained a reasonable understanding of what is going to happen in terms of in detail what is the velocity profile and why it is changing using a simple mixing length hypothesis due to Prandtl. Okay. We will stop here and at this point and in the next lecture lecture number 40 we will try to summarize uh, everything what we have done in this course and also list out what is ahead in terms of what are the newer things that we, we, we could not have time to go through but which are necessarily which are essentially very very important, but we could not uh, cover them for lack of uh, time and lack of scope of this course. So, we will stop here and we will meet again in the next lecture.